When I want to do something creative on short notice, I pull up in my art journal that I started with Bai Bun's lyrical class. I wanted to maintain the same lyrical theme throughout, though related specifically to childhood, but I have been really withdrawn lately and need a little help to get started. This book is useful to flip through for a little inspiration, and I was drawn to this artist. I love the neutral tones with the splashes of turquoise. It looks like a vintage book that someone read in the bathtub, as very minimal mark making. And so this gave me something just to start with, like neutral toned papers, printed text, uh, a focal piece or two, like these magazine clippings and child drawings, subconsciously choosing symbols of young life without really realizing it. The one thing I did want to keep on this page is this origami fold shape that looks a little bit like a house. The house can relate to the concept of family. I've also been doing a city tour theme in my sketchbook for Patreon. Uh, which includes thinking about current conflicts in housing, uh, where the romantic idea of, of raising a family in a cute little detached house is just a pipe dream for most living here, and it causes a lot of anxiety for people, so it could be a little powerful symbol. Okay, so the problem is that I felt creatively numb, and I couldn't find my flow at all. I know I always say this, but art journaling just kind of looks easy, it's marketed to be easy, it's supposed to be an intuitive passing from A to B, but other than this kismet collection of images and colors I selected, it felt like I was creatively constipated. I'd only started with a visual reference, but did not have a specific final image in mind, and I struggled a lot. But this kind of happens to people making all sorts of art. You have an idea in your mind, and you grab your paper or canvas and start drawing it out, uh, but it doesn't really look right, but you continue because everyone says if you keep working at it, it'll work itself out eventually, right? And sometimes you end up with a piece that is quite far from what you imagined, as discordant colors, uh, weird anatomy. So what you really made for yourself is a mystery, like why can't I make something I can see in my mind and I know I'm capable of? The biggest way that I get thrown off the rails in art making is I tend to skip the research stage. I don't make enough thumbnail options. Thumbnail images help a lot and most of us skip it even though it's the fastest way you can plan an image. And if you have problems with having no focal point or bad visual flow, it makes it really obvious right away if there are problems. It also helps you make choices when there's just too many options you can take and prevents you from trying to use everything at once. The lack of pressure to be perfect, it lets you be more fluid, kind of like when you draw your best work on the margins of your homework and you're unable to replicate it again. I also often skip doing separate studies of different elements that I'm using because sometimes I worry I will lose enthusiasm before I actually get started. When art is a tool for self-expression, sometimes it feels like there's only a brief moment of opportunity to stay motivated enough and connected with the piece enough to finish it. But how much better would it be if we took the time to quickly study each element and actually learned it first? Like when I wasted a day painting an ocean background I had to start over, or when I painted a night scene that could have been improved greatly with some bird studies beforehand. References are so awesome, but we're not going to be able to find the perfect one every time, <laughs> so keeping a sketchbook and sketching has really helped, which is why I made Patreon into a like sketching type of club so that I can actually make time to do that. I think the easiest way to go off the rails in an art piece is by using a color palette that isn't limited enough. Color theory is its own kind of like hurdle <laughs> we have to study, but even like when you get that knowledge down, you're still left with too many options. I'm always impressed with artists who can take a scene from life and inject these unnatural colors into it and make it actually better than reality. And some artists seem to stick to specific color schemes that they know already work, and it makes their stuff really recognizable and cool. So for this page, I borrowed my color scheme neutral browns and turquoise. There is a magazine clipping using soft pinks on this page. I knew that I could add a slight touch of the soft pink in other areas without messing it all up. Um, I even jumped in with a bright yellow green. I wasn't really thinking about it at the time, but there's also some greenery in that magazine clipping. In hindsight, I actually ended up borrowing the color scheme from clipping by accident. <laughs> and then 
<laughs> used the turquoise as my pop of bright color to chaz it up a bit and make it more interesting. Um, yeah. So even though I'm just doing art journaling, it's an activity that's meant to be imperfect and fun and intuitive, or it's the process itself that's the point, I still found it really challenging to find my flow with only a vague idea to start with. Like any journey, it's impossible to know how to get somewhere when you don't actually know where you're going. Let me know if you have any specific tips and tricks that you use down in the comments. And thank you for subscribing. I make a new art video every Thursday.